Did you know that Robert Sterling invented the first Sterling engine in 1816? In this video, I will show you the best Sterling engines, some of which were homemade. The Sterling engine is known for its efficiency, quiet operation, and potential for use in small-scale power generation. So, let's check it out. The homemade 10-cylinder radial Sterling engine was created using soda cans and other homemade items. It was a remarkable project for the creator and required a significant amount of time to build. One onlooker even suggested attempting to build a 100-cylinder engine, which would be truly remarkable. Observing the creator build this engine was deeply satisfying, and I'm, I hope you enjoyed it as well. What do you think if it would be possible to build a 100-cylinder Sterling engine? This homemade Sterling engine was built using easily accessible materials. Each cylinder head of the engine is between 5 and 6 centimeters in length and the displacer pistons are around 5 centimeters apart. The total length of the can in which the crankshaft holder is fixed, from the bottom of the can to the top of the crankshaft, is 13.5 centimeters. This engine has reached peaks of 740 RPM. Despite not being balanced, the creator did not have much trouble with vibrations because the two pistons are extremely light, weighing around 16 grams. This is a unique and eco-friendly model that uses solar power to generate motion. It is custom made and equipped with a Fresnel lens to concentrate sunlight and produce power. However, due to the small size of the lens, the amount of electricity produced is not significant enough for practical use. Therefore, it is primarily intended for educational or demonstration purposes. The model demonstrates the principles of heat transfer and the conversion of solar energy into mechanical energy. This engine stands out from other models thanks to its use of water cooling to maintain optimal operating temperatures. It's a popular choice among serious hobbyists and engineering enthusiasts due to its advanced design, which ensures efficient operation and a longer lifespan compared to other models. To get started with this model, all you need to do is fill the water reservoir and light the alcohol burner. It's truly amazing to watch this engine come to life, fueled by the heat differential between the hot and cold sides. The craftsmanship of this engine is truly stunning. As you can see, it's more complicated than the basic hot air model. Unfortunately, you can't purchase this one online since it is custom made. However, if you like it, you can support the channel that created this model by checking it out. I will leave the link in the description for this and all other creators. When I first encountered this engine, I immediately noticed its unusual characteristics. Despite relatively large piston strokes of about 16 millimeter compared to the 12 millimeter piston diameter, the engine was able to reach impressive speeds of around 2,900 RPM and maintained excellent torque. It was truly impressive to see how this Sterling engine could power a mini tank. I was surprised to see it move at 2,500 RPM on a flat track, and even more impressed to see it reach 2,900 RPM in free rotation. Despite its small displacement of 3.62 cc, it still demonstrated good torque. Even without a liquid cooling system, it heated up significantly, but was still able to operate continuously for hours without any issues. Over the years, the inventor designed and built an impressive V6 Sterling engine. The project aimed to create a multi-cylinder Sterling engine with the heater caps strategically positioned for optimal heating efficiency. Every component was meticulously machined to exacting standards. The flywheels, serving as gears in this case, were intricately splined to the crankshaft to allow for experimentation with different flywheels. 
one of the key elements of the Stirling engine is efficient heat exchange. The engine's efficiency depends greatly on the quality of heat exchange. In this video, the creator is building a horizontal Stirling engine. In the latest project update, the creator revisits the Stirling engine he had previously tested. The initial test run was not as successful as he hoped, prompting him to make several modifications. Firstly, he rotated the engine sideways and mounted it on a custom trolley. This adjustment aimed to improve the furnace's efficiency as the previous setup allowed hot gases to bypass the heat exchanger. The new furnace design includes a sideways orientation, an additional door, and a better insulated system with an air intake from below. Though it's a compromise between coal and wood fuel efficiency, the creator also added a concrete flywheel for enhanced stability and performance. This flywheel, made from two laser-cut discs filled with cement and sand, was carefully welded to maintain balance and straightness. Despite these improvements, the engine still faces challenges. The stainless steel scouring pads used as the regenerator material remain unchanged, and the compression ratio, currently high at about 1.4 bar, needs adjustment. The creator invites feedback and suggestions from viewers, emphasizing the collaborative nature of solving these engineering challenges. This engine is not homemade, but it is significantly larger than most Stirling engines available for purchase, weighing in at 2.6 kilograms. Its weight makes it very sturdy and stable when running on a table. The four-cylinder engine is a powerhouse that will leave you amazed with an output voltage of 4 to 9 volts, its performance is truly impressive. The base, bracket, and two flywheels are crafted from high-strength 6061 aluminum alloy, providing both durability and a sleek appearance. What I liked the most about this engine was its weight. Unlike most other engines, which produce huge vibrations, this one is stable, so there's no worry that it will start moving when it's working. The price of this masterpiece is about $300. This is a remarkable homemade Stirling engine, the largest one I've come across with a 317cc capacity. In the video, it's being used for milk processing. The engine is powered by an external heat source and operates on the Stirling cycle. It's fascinating to see how effectively it can convert heat into mechanical work. The builder spent about two years constructing this engine, and you can view the entire project here. I'll include the link in the description. I believe Stirling engines are a great example of efficient and environmentally friendly technology. The potential applications for these engines are vast, and it's inspiring to see individuals like the builder of this engine taking on such complex projects. What are your thoughts on Stirling engines? Have you ever considered building one yourself? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you had a great time. See you in the next one. Take care.